Good evening. It's uh, little, been a little while, hasn't it, since we uh, last met uh, and I did a vlog. Um, unfortunately, I'm really felt up to it, if I'm honest. Um, but this week it's been pretty good and today it is really good. Uh, it's evening, um, we've been sort of pottering about the house today, doing bits and bobs. Um, I've just finished a nice Joe Wicks fish and chips, which my lovely wife Rachel had made. Um, and I thought that tonight we'd do some baking. Um, I did mention, didn't I, that uh, we'd do some recipes and I'm also conscious that I'm really out of kilter with stuff that I'm telling you that I'm going to do, like an interview with my wife, an interview with my girls. Still haven't really done part two of Crohn's to Cancer. Um, I'll do it, don't get me wrong, it's just feeling well enough to, to, to be able to do it. Um, but I would say today is probably the best I've felt since uh, I've had the chemo. Um, I, this week will be session 5 of probably 12. So it's going quite well. Let me just turn this music down just slightly. Sorry about that. Yeah, so tonight what I wanted to do it is, uh, what time is it? It's quarter past 7. We haven't got long. Because Leicester are playing tonight, they're playing Brighton. They haven't been exactly enthralling to watch, if I'm honest. Uh, there's a lot of injuries, but some of the players have been, and the starting 11 have been playing like they're injured, if, if I'm honest. So, book it up, boys, and let's get a win. Let's get a good win tonight. So, tonight, what I want to do is show you, it's a very simple recipe. I'm saying it's simple, I've never done it before. Uh, I googled it, uh, it's Madeira cake. Mother's Day coming up, isn't it? My mum absolutely adores Madeira cake. We've actually bought a two this week. One from, well, it was from the paper shop, if I'm honest, and she quite liked it. The other one was a Marx's, which she really liked. She did say that the Marx's, um, you could taste the quality. It's probably because I would imagine the one from the paper shop had got margin, whereas the one from Marx's had got the good old butter. Um, tomorrow, we've got a few, few of the family coming around uh, in our social bubble. Um, so if you're watching uh, Matt Hancock, we're all right, don't worry. Um, you're doing a great job, by the way. But tomorrow, uh, we're gonna do a stew. We've got only got a little bit of uh, stewing steak, two kilos, <laughs> because the boys eat a lot of meat. So there'll probably be a lot uh, going in for extras. Um, so the stewing beef is from Archer's Butchers in Clarendon Park in Leicester. A really good butcher. Uh, probably the best stewing steak we had when my wife made a stew a few weeks ago. Uh, so I thought I'd go back. To be honest, the one that I've been using the most is uh, Joseph Morris. I've been going there for years. They're excellent as well. Really good. I really like John uh, at, uh, at the one in Wixton. Um, he's great. Um, I couldn't ask for a nicer guy and um, they're great butchers they've helped me out loads because in the past I've done some catering um, and they've they yeah they've really gone over and above let's put it that way in terms of their support uh, in some of the events that uh, I've done in the past so tomorrow as I said it's going to be a lovely stew Rachel's going to make some nice little cobblers to go on the top um, and then I'm doing dessert so dessert is and let me show you Probably one we can make together at some point. I've done it a number of times. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but they are hot lemon curd souffles. Absolutely delicious. So I'm actually going to make those uh, tomorrow. I've already done a bit of prep today, uh, and we're going to serve those with lavender biscuits. So I just show you. Here's some that I made earlier, uh, and these are. I've been in the fridge, hopefully you can see those. Because we've got a couple of little people coming tomorrow, I just thought I'd make uh, these. So they'll have in the biscuits, so they'll just go on the side with the souffles. Um, what I did earlier was I actually made, um, hope you can still hear me. Here we go. I actually made the lemon curd uh, to go in the bottom and then tomorrow I'll make the souffle. You can't really make the souffle bit in advance because it will just go flat. 
but generally speaking, they do rise. I've had a few disasters, don't get me wrong, in the past, but it's a great, a really nice, it's light, um, and after you've had a stew, which is quite filling, it's, it's nice on the palate. So that's me sorted for tomorrow, but this evening, Madeira cake. So, what do you need? You need 175 grams of butter. I'm not going to do it in ounces. I'm just going to do everything in, in, in grams and hopefully, you know, you've got scales like I've got. Here we go. And, you know, you can convert quite easily. The other one is uh, 175 grams of golden castor. Let me just... Uh, I'm thinking this is... Um, just bear with me. The camera's... I don't know why it's doing that. All right, behave. Yeah, so 175 grams of golden castor. So there we go. I've got Tesco's. To be honest, there's lots of different ones. That was the one that I got uh, today. The butter, by the way, is unsalted. Um, I always use unsalted when I'm cooking. Don't know why. I think a lot of the chefs do it. And so that is, that's the one that I'm using. Three large eggs. These are from Roots Farm. Uh, which we use locally. The grated zest of a lemon. Uh, so we'll be using that. Vanilla extract. Now vanilla extract can be rather expensive. So I've got two different sorts here. This is the one that I would normally use, but that's anywhere between six and seven pounds for that little beauty. Whereas I discovered this one, Asda, I don't know whether you can see. I think it's about one pound 75. Yes, it's smaller, but price per mil, it's very good value. Uh, it's down the baking aisle, you'll find it. I use it in a lot of cooking, to be honest. Um, what else? 200 grams of self-raising flour and 50 grams of ground almonds. So, self-raising flour, that's just from Aldi. You know, flour's flour to me. Um, there's going to be some critics out there because, yeah, there are some that are better, I would say. But for me, it works. Um, and I haven't got the packet of ground ginger, but I've got it. I've got, not ground ginger, sorry. Um, ground almond. Um, but it's here ready. So, that is the ingredients. I hate it when a recipe talks about cups. Um, because what is a cup? tends to be an American term, to be honest, but I have seen it in some English ones. So it, it could be that kind of cup, <laughs> but it equally could be that kind of cup. <laughs> so I don't like it when they use those, so I steer away from, from these type of, uh, of recipes and, and should try and keep it as simple as possible. So this one is going to be an all butter Madeira cake. We're going to serve it tomorrow, see what the kids think. Uh, and if it works, then I'll make my mum one for Mother's Day. I've also got the ingredients ready for parkin. Now, parkin is a Yorkshire recipe. It's like oaty uh, treacle, bit of ginger in it. Normally served on bonfire night. But, I mean, it's cold out at the moment, isn't it? And I think it's going to be a bit cold going forward. Now, as I say, it's, it's one of my grand's recipes. I'm not sure whether I'm actually following my grand's uh, recipe to the tea. It says to use oat meal. Oh, I can't. I went to Tesco's today, couldn't find it. Uh, even looked on their website, couldn't find it. So I'll be using porridge for that. I was going to do it tonight, but we haven't got time. What time are we now? It's 20 past seven. Football kicks off at eight, so we haven't got very long. Right, so let's get cracking. Here we go. I've got the oven on. And the oven here is at 150. Um, if you, that's a fan assisted oven, by the way. But if, uh, if you haven't got a fan assisted oven, you need it about 170. Gas, well, it's gas mark three. So, what you need to do is make sure, first of all, you've lined a tin loaf. So, this is basically a tin loaf. Got a few of these kicking around the house. And then I've literally used, it does say non stick. But to be honest, this is just as good. It's baking, it's baking parchment, baking foil. Probably got this from somewhere like Aldi or Asda, I can't remember. Um, but use a lot of that um, when I'm baking. You, 
will then need um, an electric whisk, which I've got over there. And what we're going to do is we're going to blend the butter, and then I've got 200 grams in here of golden castor. We're just going to blend those together. Now this butter's been out for quite a while out the fridge, so you do ideally need it. Um, so it's around about room temperature, just so it blends easy into uh, into the sugar. In here is 250 grams. Now, if you remember, let me just get a knife. One minute. Yeah, if you remember, I did say 175 grams. So it's round about this. So I can discard this little bit for now. I'll just pop that to one side. I'm just going to pop this on my scales, which are here. And let's just see where this is under the 75. It's pretty bang on, to be honest. Um, I do try and keep to the recipes as much as possible, um, but if you're a few grams over, don't worry about it. I need that in a bowl. I've just got this one here. Uh, I will, what, then what I'll do is, just so it makes it easier to mix, um, let me just move that out of the way. I'm just going to chop this butter into uh, a few chunks, smaller chunks. It's never easy, if I'm honest. Um, just so that it's a little bit easier to blend in with the sugar. So there we go. In goes the butter into the bowl. And then I'm literally just going to pour this golden castor over it and then you're gonna to have to follow me I'll try and turn this around again I'm not really good with the camera if I'm honest but hopefully you'll bear with me so over here I've got my mixer excuse the noise I'll just put it on a low setting and uh, just blend the two together I think the uh, the bakers among you would call that creaming. <laughs> so it's just getting the two together. As you can see, I've just tried to do what it says uh, in terms of, of doing that right. Um, so until it's sort of light and creamy is what they say. I'm not sure that that is totally light and creamy if I'm honest. Then what we need to do is add uh, the zest of a lemon and the vanilla. So I've just got a very little one. I just find it easy, particularly when you're using something like this. Uh, all, all of the uh, chefs or bakers will probably do this with the, uh, with the lemon, won't they? Um, again, it just breaks it down, makes it a little bit easier. We're not actually using the juice in there. Um, so yeah, the zest of one lemon, bear with me. Here we go. What you don't want is the pith. Um, because that can be quite bitter, so you're only trying to get really the, uh, the yellow skin off the top. can be a bit fiddly, uh, but bear with me. We're doing obviously this all in real time. Um, hope you've had a good day. I'm trying to think what I've done with mine. It seems to have been busy. We've just been doing little jobs around the house, if I'm honest. Um, had a bit of a lazy morning. Went to, the, went to the supermarket to get a few bits for tomorrow and, uh, and for today as well. Um, and then, if I'm honest, we had a little bit of a, uh, well, a, bit of a snooze probably on, on the settee uh, for a little while this afternoon. So it's been quite bitter outside today and I don't think next week's going to be that much better by the looks of it. Uh, yeah, with my chemo, I've really been feeling it in the, uh, in the tips of my finger, even today when we're out and about. Um, just exposure to the cold, and I was 
really feeling feeling it um, outside, just walking from the car to the uh, to the supermarket. Um, I've been trying to clean the car lately, um, but I can't. It's just, it's just too cold on these hands, and they just become numb. Um, it just becomes an impossible task. So I have been phoning round to get um, uh, a mobile valeter to come and do it. Um, and yeah, I phoned a couple of companies, can't get me until April, April. <laughs> uh, so there's a winner out of this lockdown. Uh, got him at it, he's our marketing director. Um, he uh, saw a post that I put on LinkedIn um, about this and he recommended me somebody and lots of work from this guy Nick. Uh, he's busy as well, uh, can't come out next week but he's coming out the following week. I don't think my car's been clean for about three weeks, normally I love to do it, it's absolutely filthy at the moment. So there we are, um, so that is the zest, all I'm going to do is literally throw that zest in here because that's what it tells me to do, gives it a little bit of flavour. Um, and then vanilla. Now, it says a couple of drops. I might as well use what I've got in here. There's hardly anything, if I'm honest. But that's probably enough. So I would say, in something like this, why don't you just put a teaspoon in um, for, for flavouring. Right, the next is we need to beat in the flour and almonds until a thick batter. So. It says three large eggs. So I'm literally going to do what they say again. And we'll just put these straight in to the mix. Because it's all going to blend together. And we'll probably have to go back over to the mixer. I'm not even sure that it says that, uh, oh, I've got a bit of shell in here. Just get that out. I'm not even sure it says that I should use the whisk, but I will. So that's three eggs, which it requires, and then it says the flour. So the flour, as I said, is self-raising. Now what I do is I will use, and let me just get rid of this, I'll use the sieve, but I'll sieve it actually into the scales, and then I'll sieve it into the bowl, just trying to get it as aerated as possible. So to be honest, this has already been sieved a couple of times. Um, you're going to ask me now, how much are you putting in? And just to remind you, this is, where are we? 200 grams of self-raising flour. So again, I'm just going to sift this straight in. We are now just gone half past seven, so we're about 10, 15 minutes in. So it's not really taking that long to do this. And we're nearly there. So there we go. Now, I'm going to take you over here again to my mixer. I haven't got a plug over there, unfortunately, that uh, I can use. So again, I'm just going to blend all of this together. And hope it works. <laughs> it's supposed to form a batter. But I'm not sure we've got quite enough in here. So you can see, it is a little bit of a batter. It's quite a thick batter. But the batter really should have a little bit of run on it. So I'm just gonna get one more egg. Uh, maybe they weren't large, maybe they were medium, um, but just bear with me. So, one more egg. So I, I think it just needs a little bit more moisture in there. Yeah, this is looking more like a, a batter now. Just that one egg changes the consistency quite nicely and that, that, that's becoming more of a batter now. I think having put that in, it will pay dividends in the baking. 
Don't overbeat it because you'll perhaps beat the air out of it. So there we go. So that's it. You can just see the consistency there. So let me move you back again. I will get better at this. Somebody will, somewhere along the lines will say, Dave, you need a hand with the camera in terms of how to use it and that. Um, feel free, anybody out there that wants to give me some tutorial, whether it's online or whatever, I'm open to it. Um, I'm determined to uh, improve. Right, it also says that I need to line this tin loaf with butter. So, the butter that I discarded, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rip a bit of, off the butter uh, that was packed in the packaging. Just rub some butter into here, and then I'm literally going to line this uh, loaf tin with, with butter. Don't forget, it's it's an all butter Madeira cake. So James Martin again will love me because uh, I'm using quite a lot. Um, and if you're going to make, if you're going to make it. You know, don't don't go scrimping. It's it, it's yeah. You know, it's not low fat. Let's face it. It's a treat. So there we go. A bit messy. I'm not really good at lining these tins, if I'm honest. Uh, but it works. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, and the batter here will uh, will make the difference. Let me just get a cloth because my hands are all buttered up now. Right, and we are literally nearly there. What you can do as well is, like I, I thought that that mixture was just a bit too firm earlier, you could add a splash of milk just to make it into a little bit more of a batter. Now I've got here uh, just a, a, wooden, a plastic spatula that I quite like to use. Again, it, you can see sort of consistency of it. Um, it's a nice thick batter. Uh, we'll see in the cooking whether or not I should have perhaps added that splash of milk as well, but to be honest, I think that's quite a good consistency. Um, so you just need to really scoop this out. Again, try, don't try uh, and, and force it, but try to keep as much of the air in here as possible. To say, I've never tried or attempted this one before but because my mum absolutely adores it and it's Mother's Day coming up, I just thought, you know what? Why not a treat her to something homemade? And the parking, I'm hoping that uh, I will do that fairly soon. Uh, certainly in the next couple of days, do that as a recipe. Uh, I've got other ones that I could go through with you. If you notice, there were some uh, ground almonds in that. Tom Kettridge, and I know it's probably not the weather, right now or the season, but he does an absolutely awesome spiced orange cake. Um, I'll do it at some point, but you use whole orange. You have to boil it, probably these oranges, I think I boil them for about an hour, so they're really soft and then you liquidize them. There's no, there's no flour or butter in it. You know, use ground almonds. It is absolutely delicious, really moist, very tasty. Uh, it's nice with a bit of creme fraiche or cream even uh, and it's something that I tend to do around about Christmas time but it is a nice winter warmer if I'm honest. So all I'm doing here is, is uh, evening the mixture out into the corners, doesn't have to be brilliant and that's literally it. So if you remember I've got a fan assisted oven, it's on 150, how long do you need to cook it for? Have I written it down? I haven't but I do know that it's, here we go, it's 55 minutes to an hour. The test really will be to use something like a skewer, or we can use a knife. A skewer is probably the best. Um, and if it comes out clean, you know that uh, it's cooked. So hopefully that should rise. Hopefully I get a little bit of uh, brown on the top. Um, and what we're gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna just put this in the oven now. I'll probably put, pop it in the middle. So hopefully you can see that. 
Let me just turn you a little bit more. There we go. Actually, I'll put it on top here. It's on a fairly low heat um, when it comes to baking. Just pop it in there and say 55 minutes time. I'll set the timer now on here. It's going to interrupt my football, but there you go. Needs must. I'll put it on for 55 minutes and we'll see how we go. So that's it for now. I've got to try and edit this together somehow. So we'll come back in 55 minutes and see the results. See you soon. God bless. So those of you that are eagle-eyed will realise that earlier I missed out the ground almonds. So actually off camera I had to get the mixture out of the oven, put it back into a bowl, add the ground almonds uh, and then get it back in. Fortunately I realised my mistake after it had only been in the oven a couple of minutes. Um, think it's going to work. Well it actually has so uh, here we go. So here we are, we're 55 minutes in. Leicester already won down after 10 minutes. To be honest, been pretty inept tonight. Not entertaining at all. I don't know what's going to happen with uh, Leicester this season at the moment. With all the injuries, we've got seven um, first team players out. Um, but those that we're playing with just aren't cutting the mustard at the moment. Anyway, 55 minutes in, let's have a look. And you can see that, that's how I'd expect it to look to be honest. Now it's going to get a skewer to see whether we are where we need it to be. So, that's come out nice and clean. It went in pretty easy to be honest, but I don't want to over bake it. I reckon 55 minutes for this oven pretty good. We'll just turn this off. I'm really pleased with that. That looks good. So what we're going to do is I'm going to just transfer it onto a baking rack. If you've got anything, really it just needs to be vented ideally underneath. I mean you could use something like that for example um, and just vent it on there. But ideally you just need to get some air under it. So I reckon that looks pretty good. Um, I'll update you when I do the, the next recipe as to how it tastes but I'm really pleased with that. Have a good night. Uh, I'll catch up with you soon. We'll do the parking. I've got other recipes like I said. One thing I'd love to do with you is one of my Thai curries. Uh, really nice um, and pretty simple to, be, to, to, to do. So Let's hope Leicester win tonight. We really need it. Uh, and I'll catch up with you soon. Bye.